here <laughs> they're all here for you no way first of all i want to congratulate you on paramore it's beautiful thank you, thank you. i got to see it for the second time last <clears throat> night yeah did you have uh, a good time oh my gosh i had the best time i actually went in kind of tired it had been a long day and within the first 30 seconds of the opening number which is this incredible tap number i was like i'm awake i'm excited i'm it just was the perfect pick me up after a really long good. day good yeah, yeah it's it's pretty amped it's like it never stops and then it's over and you're like darn i wish it was, would keep going and then you go right back to the box office and get tickets to see it again hopefully <laughs> repeat offenders yeah paramore is doing something that broadway has never seen before which mm -hmm. is bringing cirque du soleil and this incredible sort of death-defying acrobatics to the Broadway stage. Yeah. Your background is in musical theater, not in circus, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I um, dance, dancing, singing, that's it. Um, yeah, I didn't fly until I found out I got the job and then I went to Montreal to learn how to fly. Uh, <clears throat> tell me about that. <clears throat> they were like, okay, um, now you have to go to Montreal to the Cirque du Soleil headquarters and do your physical test, physical exam. And I was like, oh, no, I can't even do, you have to be able to do 10 push-ups, mm -hmm. um, like real ones. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I think I can maybe do that. And I, I managed that, and then we did harness training. So <clears throat> it just meant like, I mean, you put it on, and it's kind of like the alpha moment, you know? And so I went fly, I was flying all around Cirque. It was so fun. <laughs> Cirque is like a sort of a machine, right? I mean, it's an international organization. Mm -hmm. Um, they've done, how long has Cirque du Soleil been around? Since like the forever. 80s. Yeah. Yeah. When they were just like a t troop in, in the street, you know, it was like very um, street circus artists, like, you know, they weren't really doing it for money and they were just traveling around. It was Did really you the circus. ever get to see any Cirque shows when you were growing up? I didn't, when I was growing up, no. I haven't, um, I didn't know anything about it until I was in college. And I'm from Kentucky, where like sometimes things happen and you don't realize it. <laughs> like Cirque doesn't Cirque doesn't come through Louisville. Maybe it did, but for some reason I didn't know anything about it. I heard you saw Cats when you were growing up. Yeah, that was my first musical. I saw it in Louisville, and I did fall asleep. I remember, but <laughs> <clears throat> but then you I were really remember, little, though. Right? Yeah, I was young, and yeah. but then. My mom was like, oh, what have we done? Because then every day I was out in the backyard, like, throwing leaves and, like, putting leaves on myself, like, memory! <laughs> like, I wouldn't stop. I wouldn't stop singing it. <laughs> on your website, there's a picture of a little girl dressed as a cat. Was that you? I think that was probably Betty shortly Betty? thereafter, yeah. Yeah? I used to paint my face, like, every night. That's so cute. To oh, show actually, up for dinner. And that reminds me... I. I dug way deep into your website, of course. Um, there's all, there's, speaking of you doing your own makeup, didn't you have to go through like makeup boot camp for, for Paramore? Yes, it's intense. It's really intense. Talk us through what that process is because you have such a like clean, fresh, beautiful skin. Like I feel like you could go out without makeup. The idea of you having to spend an hour or well, however long it is. Cirque taught me all about the, the art of the contour. Oh. I'm actually contoured today. I don't know if you can tell. I can't tell. It's like Can a very you give Kardashian us a thing. Little lesson on the art of the contour. Well, like your for like my forehead is shaded from here back and here back. I don't know if you can tell, but it's supposed to make your features pop and and then your cheekbones and then you do your jawbone and you do like your nose. That's kind of what we learned how to do is contour our face and then it's very powder, you know, like I mean, it's it took it, an hour to do my makeup and and now I, I can get it down in like a half an hour now. So you're doing all your own makeup. You don't have like a makeup person? No, the they show? trained us. We would rehearse for nine hours and sometimes they just tack on an extra hour just to practice our makeup. And at the time we were like, Ugh, but, but now we're all really good at it. 
Yeah, well, you started rehearsing for the show in January, right? Mm -hmm. And then it opened in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the show closed, closed down for a couple of days, which is normal for Cirque, but not for Broadway, to make some yeah. major changes. That was like, I didn't see that coming. We, we, we had a company meeting, and I was like, oh, no, we're closing. I was like, we're done. And they were have like, you are closing, home. but just for four days. Just for and four days, we're and we're going to, yeah, we got a whole new script. And we were, like, rehearsing the new script during the day and then still doing the old show at night. It was, like, crazy, but I think it's really, really good now. Oh, and here I was thinking that maybe uh, during those four days you got to go on vacation. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were rehearsing. We were back in tech, really. Which was um, fun. So for people who haven't seen the show, mm -hmm. um, can you give a, a short description of what that plot line is? Sure. Yeah. It's um, <clears throat> in the new revamp, it's actually set in the early 50s. So it's the golden age of Hollywood. And um, there's this grand director who, let's say he's kind of like a Hitchcock or something. He was like, you know, one of the big directors of the time. And he's trying to shoot um, a new film. He's kind of had a few flops. And he um, goes out one night, and he's looking for a new girl for his film. And he goes to a club, and um, he, I, I sing a song, and he like falls in love immediately and says, I, I want to put you in my film. And it's kind of that story where you, you know the, the small town girl gets snatched up, kind of like a Judy Garland type situation. And he brings her writing partner and her composer w along and they kind of just start making films together, but the composer is in love with her from way back when, and the director is now in love with her, and um, a love triangle ensues, and she's like famous all of a sudden, and she's got these guys like tearing at her from both ends, and it becomes kind of like a, do I want to maintain this life of fame and fortune, or do I want to just seek the simple life with this guy who I know, you know, and that's... That's kind of what it's about. Yeah, the love triangle is really central, and it's also the name of my favorite number in the show. Yeah, that's um, really epic. The way that the creative team has designed the show to incorporate both everything you love about a Broadway musical and also um, all of the acrobatics of, of the circus involves a kind of body double, stunt double mm -hmm. technique, and uh, in that number, it's particularly present. Right. Can you talk about that? Yeah, it's super clear in that number, and I think it's probably one of the more successful like integrations, where we're all at once on stage. You're you're getting Cirque and musical theater, and um, <clears throat> so Indigo is faced with this love triangle situation, and right when she can't like handle it anymore, the acrobats come on and we switch places, and it becomes this hand to trapeze number. So there's a guy on a trapeze, there's a guy on the ground, and there's a girl that's literally being tossed between them, and like. She's like a rag doll. It stresses me out um, every <laughs> night. And, uh, and it's just, <clears throat> yeah, it's, um, you know, the imagery is insanely beautiful. And we're singing at the same time. And it's like this, this passionate kind of tango song. And it's, it gets the biggest applause every night because I think it's just so enrapturous, you know. Well, it's really fun. I've heard it said many times, and I wish I knew the origin of the quote, that the reason that musical theater in its sort of traditional form works is that we sing because we can't talk anymore. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in your show, uh, and I might be plagiarizing this quote as well, um, that you fly because you can't even sing anymore. Yeah. Um, it just takes <laughs> it to that whole new level. Mm -hmm. um, in that number uh, in particular, I love that you're, you're in this royal blue gown mm -hmm. and the uh, the, is, do you call it a stunt double? An a, she's an acrobat. The acrobat, yeah. Yeah, so the acrobat comes in with her hair done just like yours mm -hmm. in a little um, sort of spandex uh, yeah. trapeze performer's outfit in the exact same color. Mm -hmm. And then um, you have Ryan Vanna, who plays the composer in a kind of a tweed suit, and the acrobat comes in wearing the same outfit. And you have Jeremy Kushner, who's the director, in a red jacket, and the acrobat comes out wearing something similar. Mm -hmm. So, and you're intertwined in a way that's so theatrical and so beautiful, and um, that, that number to me is sort of the epitome of what makes the entire show so well the, done. The other fun thing about the number is that the acrobats are acting with us. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think it's something that they kind of just, a lot of them are really natural at 
actors. And I, when, when I'm in a scene and I have a chance to watch, it, like everyone, it, all the acrobats are so engaged and so funny and I don't know if that's part of their training or if we just really lucked out and like everyone in the show happens to be really good actors as well. Uh -huh. um, and I have moments, there's one acrobat who's just French and um, he, he connects with me on stage and I'm just like, Oh yeah, you better connect with me on stage. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> Wait, which one is that? He, um, he, they, they're back and forth. There's two acts that do the hand to trapeze act. So you, the one you saw last night, um, you saw Connor. When Connor's not on, it's Martin. And right, and Connor one. and Martin both like will sneak little moments with me on stage where they're just like angsty, looking at me, you know, as Joey, mm -hmm. and they nail it. It's really fun. Well, there, there <laughs> is some definite eye candy in this show. Um, Tell me about it. Uh, was the, the unicycle act, has that been added since the That's since early previews? This unicycle guy, you guys? Who is that and can you introduce me? I know. That's Philippe. Oh, Philippe. He's Ooh. darling, isn't he? And then there are these twins, the Atherton twins, who mm -hmm. um, they look like Ken dolls and they swing from like straps Greek that like gods. fly. And, you know, you can't even believe that they're human. I know. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I've gotten a little, like, desensitized to the fact that the cast is so insanely sexy. <laughs> but <laughs> they are. It's the sexiest cast on Broadway. And you have the best seat in the house. Because so, mm -hmm. so the, um, the way that the storyline incorporates the acrobats is that AJ, the director, at the same scene he discovers Indigo, he says, who are all of these people? And, and uh, his friend says, oh, they're all, they're all either acrobats or they're drunk. And he goes, I want acrobats in all my movies. <laughs> so in, in all yeah. of the movie scenes from then on, he incorporates these, these characters. But um, there's, there's another, probably, I know I said Love Triangle was my favorite scene, but now I'm changing my favorite scene okay. to one where you uh, live on stage recreate m classic movie posters. Yeah. And then the acrobats are all it's hard to explain. I just want, I wish that everybody had seen it, but hopefully everybody will go see it. Yeah, I hope so. That's um, my favorite one. But then you're, you're standing there as Cleopatra, and you, the gift to Queen Cleopatra in the movie is, is the twins mm -hmm. who are doing their strap act. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for a lot of the acrobatics, you're the witness. Yeah, I'm like center. I, I mean, for the strap act especially, I have definitely the best seat in the house. And I don't get tired of watching it. I just watch it every night, and like I don't have to act. I'm just like, I'm, uh, this is amazing. You have some acrobatics of your own in the show that you don't always get switched out. The dancing, in particular, is so impressive. Well, thank you. You've got. I, I told them that I wanted to dance because that's what I, I was a dancer. You yeah. You started dancing when you were like six. I started when I was like three, and then Ooh. I competed. And, and in my first tour, like, uh, I got my equity card doing the Grease tour, and it was, I was the hand jive specialty dancer. Uh, I'm going to hold that microphone, and you're going to show us your best hand jive. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> you were the expert. Oh, thank you for letting me uh, letting me put you on the spot with that. If you yes. tell me you're a hand jive expert, I'm going to make you show me. The last time I I said I was, I messed it up so royally, and I was uh, like, guess I'm not the expert anymore. I know <laughs> your things. special skills also says that you can pogo, pogo stick without mm -hmm. your hands. I wish I had a pogo stick to make you demonstrate <laughs> that. For I haven't me. done that for a while, but yeah, I used to like pogo stick down my block, like look, no hands, and nobody was watching. <laughs> it was just for my own amusement. <laughs> So, so weird. I'm a weird. I was a weird kid. There was about it. there was one point <laughs> in the show where I thought you had an acrobat stunt double, but I don't think it actually was. Which is when you go into these crazy splits while you're being held over somebody's head. That's yeah. actually you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. I I'm flexible. <laughs> and the, and now that I'm in this show, I'm like I I'm, I'm I'm actually trying to like learn a skill. I want to learn a circ skill badly. Which one? I think silks. Mm. Yeah, I think I want to learn silks. Although it's like way more, um, it's, you get like silk burns, like these huge broad silk burns, and it's actually like quite difficult, more, more difficult than it looks. It's not as graceful as it looks. But. You actually um, injured yourself early on, right, in your ribcage area? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were doing this 
trick. I really wish that it had stayed, but they're usually in Cirque, they'll do it with like the little, little girls, like 90 pound girls. And it's where like a row of guys will, they picked me up by like my rib cage and I, and I did like a cartwheel and I got passed off from one to the next to the next without touching the ground, you know? And it was just like, turn, turn, turn. And at one point we were rehearsing it and like, I think it was a thumb like ended up under and it like popped my rib. Yikes. Yeah, but so that, that trick got cut. Oh. What's your favorite uh, move, your favorite physical move that you get to do in the show? Um, I like the harness. I like to um, have this like slow motion fall in the harness and I'm just like trying so desperately to look like I'm really actually falling in slow motion and it's fun every night to kind of figure out how to do it because it, the rotation's different every night and I'm trying to catch the lights differently and... I'm like, look, everybody, I'm, I'm doing this Cirque thing, too, at the end of the show. <laughs> is that the one, the scene in the silver dress? Yeah. This is an incredibly gorgeous, very old Hollywood scene. Um, is it true that, because you're hanging upside down, but your dress doesn't go over your head, is it true right. that they built it in some magical way so it kind of defies gravity? Yeah, it's like a magic skirt. I'm wearing this, a normal dress, and then I change into what I like to call my Cirque Spanx. <laughs> and like, I put them on, and then I have this skirt that's got it's like wiring and stuff in it. So I turn upside down, and it stays right side up. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. It's cool. Uh, what are your favorite musicals? Like, what did you grow up on? Um, I, I grew up a lot on, I grew up on, like, Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers type of movies. And we didn't go to the theater a ton, but, um, you know, I was a big fan of... Cats, I was a big fan of, um, Annie, all like the kids, you know, musicals. And, but then when I got into college, that was when I kind of like got obsessed with musicals and I would listen to, you know, musicals in my car. And, and my favorite by far is Ragtime. I love Ragtime and I hope I get to do it one day. I thought you got to play mother in Ragtime in, in college. In college I did. Yeah. But I'm like, one day on Broadway I'm going to play mother. Well, do you know about this, um... The Ellis Island production of Ragtime, they did one reading of it, but supposedly they want to make that a regular thing. So. Really? Yeah. I want to do that. Well, just we'll uh, make a call to your agents. And yeah. Get you seen for it. <laughs> have you seen any other shows that are playing in New York right now? Yeah, I, I have had a chance to see a few. I saw, I've seen Waitress, I've seen Color Purple. Um, I loved Spring Awakening was kind of um, like so close to my heart because I did the workshop in L.A., with Deaf West, and man, that was so epic. It was so wonderful. Um, what else? I saw Bright Star and just loved it, and I'm so sad it's gone. The album is fantastic. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And by the way, the Paramore album is, is available as well. Yeah. And um, I've been listening to it nonstop since I first saw the show. Oh, I guess since the album came out. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, if you can't see the show, it's a, it's a nice kind That of was really weird. Like, that was re weird, hearing <laughs> myself on an album like that. How so? Is it your first cast album? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was just, I mean, uh, I don't know. I guess I, I just didn't think I would feel the way I felt. And we had a listening party, and I was just, like, very overwhelmed at the thought that, that, that it was me. So it was listening to it, not recording it, that felt weird? Yeah, recording it, I, I felt super comfortable in the studio. I love, I love being in the recording studio. It's, like, just cozy and so much fun. But then I was like, it's actually me, because you're, you're used to like playing soundtracks and singing along, and it's not you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I haven't listened to it since, because it just kind of was like, it's like almost like the Twilight Zone or something. <laughs> well, I highly recommend it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and in fact, in the Love Triangle song, you have this like operatic, I don't even know what you call it, a solo that where you're just belting note after note and goes so high, and I'm like, how can that girl look so pretty, dance like that, sing like this? You are the triple threat like I've never seen before. You're so sweet. Thank you. I threw that in because in college I trained in classical. That was like the, the only vocal training I've had is classical training, and um, coloratura is what I, I was like. Y'all, if I'm going to stand here during this number, can I do some vocal acrobatics? And they're like, well, show us what, you, what you're thinking. And I did, and they're like, yeah. Oh, I like that you stuck. call it that, vocal acrobatics, because yeah, it, it, it fits. Yeah, I think it works. It's cool, and that's kind of what the creation was all about. I was like, um, hey, guys, I, I can play the spoons. Can I play the spoons here? And they were like, oh, yeah, sure. So 
I play the spoons because I just <laughs> said I wanted to. <laughs> How great that you were in a creative environment where they allowed you to contribute like I that. I know. It was like being a kid again and just you throw, you know, toss, toss, what do you, toss your hat in the ring and whatever sticks kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's but. great. So you, like your character, are a small town girl who mm -hmm. moved to the big city to make your dreams come true. Yeah. How did that happen for you? I know that you studied musical theater in college. And you've mm -hmm. done some TV and some movies. Um, mm -hmm. And now you're on Broadway. Um, yeah, it's been, a, I mean, it's been almost 10 years since I graduated from school, and I've been fortunate to be, I've worked pretty consistently, but but then there were the times when I was, like, waiting tables or babysitting or selling, like, samples at Whole Foods. I mean, I did, like, all kinds of different survival jobs, but between that, I just kind of took what came to me, and my first tour was, like, the non-equity bus and truck tour, and for nine months, we would just, like, get up at 4 a.m. and get on the bus and drive to the next theater and put on a show and then do it all over again. That was, you know, I'm really glad that I had that experience because it was a great learning experience and humbling. And, and I moved to L.A. and I tried that for a while and I was there for five and a half years. So I don't know. I just keep doing what comes and that's it. <laughs> there was a lot of music uh, in your performance uh, past even before you moved to New York, right? Mm -hmm. I know that you were involved in the Boz Lerman show that's now in Vegas. Yeah. Um, have you been, and they've, they've announced recently that Moulin Rouge is coming to the stage, and knowing your, um, your connection to Boz and, and that, uh, that West Coast show, I've been secretly crossing my fingers, and now not so secretly, that you are going to end up being a part of that show. I mean, I dyed my hair red yesterday, so I don't know. I'm just like, hello, everybody, Satine. Did, uh, did no. that have something to do with, with no. why you dyed your hair? I guess in hindsight, yeah. But I just woke up and I was like, I'm getting my hair done today and I'm going to dye it red. But maybe, maybe I was secreting Satine. Well, now it's out in the universe. We're going to take some questions <laughs> from the audience okay. if you're up for it. Great. Hey, Ruby. Hi. Um, I actually love your hair. Thank um, you. I was wondering what your experience was um, on Girl Meets World, because I read that you were on it and my nephews mm -hmm. love the show. <clears throat> That was really cool. Um, I booked Girl Meets World because I looked similar to Sabrina Carpenter, and they were looking for somebody to play an older version of her. Um, and it all happened really quickly. And then before I knew it, I was at the table read, and I was sitting next to Danielle Fischel, and I was like, oh, my God, Topanga. Oh, my God, 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 oh, my God. And I was trying not to freak out. And then, like, there was Ben Savage, and he directed the episode. So I worked really one-on-one -on -one with him, and... The whole time I'm just like, oh my god, it's Corey, it's Corey, it's Corey, oh my god, it's Corey, you know, because I was such a fan, and it's all the same family, it's all like the same producers, the same writers, they keep it all in the family, so it was a very tight knit group, and I, um, I just kind of like tried to fit in as much as I could, and then playing like an older Sabrina was really really hard because I met her, and she's like, sup, I'm like the coolest girl in the entire world, and I like, got my stuff together, and I was like how can I be more mature than you? <laughs> she was, like, so mature as a 16-year-old. And I was like, yeah, I'm cool, too. I'm cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And, like, that's basically my character work was just trying to be as cool or cooler than her. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to talk in my deep voice and be like, what's up? <laughs> You're so fantastic on screen. My favorite <laughs> character that I, I... I didn't realize it was you until doing research for this, but the, when you were the... Um, the Pilates instructor on Desperate Housewives. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I loved that character. <laughs> and you just shine you. from the screen. Oh, I had so much fun doing that. And Felicity Huffman was like, she just took my hand and, because it was my first kind of bigger part on TV. And she like just held my hand and she helped me through the whole thing. It was really, really great. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I did, I, I, I did like a um, cayenne pepper honey cleanse right before that. Because I had two days to get ready. And I saw my costume, and I was like, oh, God. Yeah, the costume was like two strips of fabric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this is going to be immortalized on television. Oh. You've, got, you've had some other skin-bearing moments on TV as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. That, the Masters of Sex was one that I had to call home about, and I was just like, well, Dad, <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you that it's my first nude scene. So I, he, no, he didn't watch it. <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah. The rest of us watched it. That was it. terrifying. I was, like, shaking. Nick D'Augusto was so sweet with me, but right before the scene, you know, we, like, fall into the scene. We fall into bed. And so, like, right before they said go, I was, like, shaking like this. And he was like, it's totally cool. It's totally cool. And I was like, I know, but my boobs are out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm so scared. He's like, just deep breaths. It was 
It was a crazy weird experience. I bet. I bet. <laughs> Do we have another question? Hey, Ruby, your hair looks Hi. great. I thought that's why you said you liked Annie. I, Thank you. You look very natural. <laughs> I want to know if you ever, like, researched old Hollywood, or were you interested in it, or did you learn anything about it from this part? Yeah, I mean, I um, I got really into, for a while, like, the re um, trying to recreate the makeup of some of the old Hollywood starlets, just fun. And I have this one, like, Grace Kelly tutorial on, on YouTube that I haven't taken down yet, and it's just me making myself look like Grace Kelly. Um, so, and I'm just enamored by, like, all those all the glamour and the, those women were just like strong and so they're just spitfires, you know, and there's nothing soft about them. They were just like taking names. It was, I'm so inspired by all of them and I'm like so ready for, I, I want like the, the tap dance um, movie musical to come back in a real way in like an epic way. Have you seen Holiday Inn yet? No. I'm it's got to some see great it. tap in it. Yeah, yeah, I'm dying. Add it to your list. I will, I will. We have time for one more. Hello. Hi. Since you started dancing at such a young age, I wanted to know what was your favorite style of dance and what's your favorite go-to dance move at a party? <laughs> um, I was always a tapper. I love tap dance. And um, I'll tap down the grocery store still. I just like, or uh, what do you call it? Um, Anytime like I'm in an awkward situation and I, and I feel like I want to get out of it, I'll like travel back out of it. Like the, these like, <laughs> like, and I'm going to take my way. <laughs> um, at a party, like, I um, secretly, like, really wish that I was a really cool hip-hop, like, pop and locker. Um, so I'll, like, really get down at a party and uh, no apologies. I'll just, like, get really, <laughs> get really into it. Um, I if, if I'm really feeling festive, then I do like to bust out the worm sometimes. Mm. Um, last night, I, I bowled a strike on my first go, and I did a drop split, and then I stood up and did, like, a cabbage patch, and I was like, I'm a nerd. Uh, that's at the Broadway Bowling League? Yeah. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Did anybody get video of that? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to sneak in next time <laughs> and... Uh, Get, get film of you bowling a strike. Yeah, if I bowl a strike, you can guarantee a drop split. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Ruby Lewis, I want to tell everybody where they can find you online. Um, Instagram and uh, Twitter. It's, I always thought it was Ruby Lula, but <laughs> it's Ruby Lou L-A. Yeah. Right? Yeah. L-E-W-L-A. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got some fun videos. There's a video of you singing the national anthem from the New York Giants on your Instagram. Yeah, I did that Sunday. That was crazy. Um, oh, and I didn't, ugh, we're out of time, but I, I loved that I got to visit Ruby's dressing room uh, last night, and she, she built a little bar so that everybody can come visit her dressing room and has all these gummy candies, and it's all decorated with stuff from home, and mm -hmm. I don't know, I just feel like you're, you're such, a, such a bright presence on Broadway, and I'm Aww. so glad that you're here, um, you. both here on stage with me and here in New York in Paramore. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's a dream come true. Thank you for being here, Ruby. Thank you.